Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we're going to explore linear approximation. Uh, so here is the situation. We have a function, y equals f of x, which I've drawn here. And we have a point on the function, uh, a point on the graph of the function where the x coordinate is x0, and then the corresponding y coordinate would be f of x0. Plugging x0 into the function, the y coordinate would be f of x0. And suppose that we know f of x0. And suppose, so without even using a calculator, we'll suppose that x0 is a very nice number for the function f of x, so that we can actually just plug it in and get an output very easily. So we know f of x0. And Frequently, if x0 is a number that we can plug into f without using a calculating device, then chances are good that we can also plug x0 into f prime, so that we will also know f prime of x0 uh, without using a calculator. And if we know these two things, if we know f of x0 and f prime of x0, then we can draw the tangent line to the curve. We can make the equation of the tangent line to the curve without even using a calculator. We can make that equation. And we can then use that as part of a linear approximation. So if we know these things, then we can use linear approximation to estimate f of x1. So here you see I've drawn x1 on the x-axis, not too far away from x0, maybe a little bit far just for the sake of the picture. But we want to think of x1 as being near x0. Then I will be able to approximate f of x1. So maybe, f of, maybe x1 is not a nice number to plug into the function, and maybe we would need to use a calculator to see what f of x1 uh, is equal to. So the idea of linear approximation is to make an approximation of f of x1 without using a calculator. So what I know is f of x0 and f prime of x0, and with that information I can draw this tangent line. And then what I want to know, what I want to approximate is the height of this dot here, which is f of x1. And using this tangent line, if I draw a, tan if I draw a dot on the tangent line corresponding to the point x1, the x-coordinate x1, then these two dots are close together. And if I give the uh, tangent line a name, since it's a line, let's call it L of x, then what we can see is that f of x1 is approximately equal to L of x1, and this is under the assumption that x1 is near x0. The tangent line L of x is the tangent line at the point x0 comma f of x0. And x1 is some x value that's near x0. So the function at x1 and the line at x1 should be close if x1 is near the point of tangency x0. So this is the idea of linear approximation. And it's called linear approximation because L is a linear function. It's the equation of the tangent line. So what is the function L of x? What's the formula for L of x? It's a tangent line, so the way a tangent line is generated, the equation is generated, is from the point-slope formula. y minus y0 is equal to m times x minus x0 y0 is the y coordinate of the point of tangency, which is f of x0. And m is the slope of the tangent line, and so the major point of differential calculus is that m comes from taking the derivative and then plugging in the corresponding x coordinate. So take the derivative of f first and then plug in x0. And then we have times x minus x0. And I want to write this as y equals L of x. 
So I'm simply going to move the f of x0 to the other side, add f of x0 to the other side, and I'll put it in the front. So y equals l of x is equal to f of x0 plus f prime of x0 times x minus x0. This is what's called the, this tangent line equation is also called the linearization of the function f at the point x0. It's the linearization of the function at the point x0. This line is called the linearization. It's the linearization of f at x0. So then we could use that to approximate, we have the formula, and then we could use that to approximate f of x1. f of x1 will be approximately l of x1. So how do you compute L of x1? F of x0 is a number that we know. F prime of x0 is a number that we know. X minus x0. x0 is a number that we should know. So all we have here is an x right there. L of x1 would be obtained by putting in x1 right there. So L of x1 is F of x0 times f prime of x0, uh, plus f prime of x0 times x1 minus x0. And all of this uh, should be known. x1 will be given. It's the thing you're trying to approximate, f of x1, so x1 will be given. x0 we can determine based on the function. x0 should be near x1, and it should be a point where we know f of x0 and f prime of x0. So it's up to us usually to pick the x0, and we pick it so that we can figure out these two. So x1 is given in a problem, that makes us choose this one and determine those two. So we should be able to figure out all four numbers here and do this calculation. Now let's try an example. Let's use linear approximation to approximate a square root. Uh, let's say we want to approximate the square root of 84. The square root of 84. Well, 84 is not a nice number to plug in to the square root function. x1 is going to be 84. Uh, what I want to know is, is there a number near 84 that I can plug into that function? And I'll call that number x0. And clearly a number that's near 84 that goes into that function very well is 81. The square root of 81 is 9. So we're going to let f of x, the function is the square root function, then f of x0 is f of 81, the square root of 81, which is 9. And what about the derivative? Can I plug 81 into the derivative? The derivative of this function, f prime of x, is 1 over 2 root x. And so therefore, f prime of 81 is 1 over 2 times the square root of 81, which is 1 over 18. So. I know f of 81, I know f prime of 81, those are going to be right there. And then 84 minus 81. So to finish it off, the linearization formula would be L of x would be f of x0, which would be 9 plus f prime of x0, which would be 1 over 18, times x minus x0, and the number for x0 is 81. That's a number that we can plug into the function with no trouble. So there's my linearization. And then the square root of 84, that would be f of 84. That's approximately l of 84. I can put 84 in right there. It would be 9 plus 1 over 18 times 84 minus 81. 84 minus 81 is 3. 3 over 18 is 1 sixth. So 9 plus 1 sixth. That's my linear approximation. Which makes a lot of sense. We figure that the square root of 84 should be a little bit more than 9. And the linear approximation tells us this much more. 1 sixth. If you like decimals, the decimal approximation of 1 sixth well, the exact decimal is repeating, 
666666. <clears throat> uh, let's try another example. Let's try an example involving the logarithm function. So let's try to approximate the natural log of, say, 1.2. Approximate the natural log of 1.2. What I know is the natural log of 1 is 0. So I know the natural log of 1, and I also see that 1.1 is right near 1. So the x1 value that I want to plug into my function is 1.2. The x0 function that I am comfortable with in my function is 1. And the function itself is, of course, the logarithm function whose derivative is 1 over x. So to follow the formula, I need to know f of x0, which would be f of 1, which would be 0. And I need to know f prime of x0, which would be f prime of 1, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. And then the linear approximation formula is there. The linearization L of x, the linearization of the logarithm at x equals 1 would be this with an x there. So that would be f of x 0 is 0 plus 1 times x minus 1. So in other words, L of x is simply x minus 1. And then the square root of the natural log, excuse me, the natural log of 1.2 is approximately L of 1.2, which would be 1.2 minus 1, which is 0.2. So the natural log of 1.2 is approximately 0.2. The linear approximation, the linearization is x minus 1, the linearization of the log curve. So in other words, graphically what we've done is this. Here's the point 1 comma 0 on the graph of the logarithm curve. If we draw this tangent line, the equation of the tangent line is y equals x minus 1. And then if we want to plug in x equals, if we want to plug in x equals 1.2, which is near 1, I've exaggerated that a little bit for effect. Let me unexaggerate slightly here. There's 1.2. Then the log, the curve I've drawn here is y equals log x. The log of 1.2 looks like it's a little bit less than L of 1.2. And when you plug in 1.2, it's very easy. 1.2 minus 1 is 0.2. So the height of this top dot is 0.2. It's a little bit more than what we want, which would be the log of 1.2. So there's uh, linear approximation. Thank you for watching.